Hello, everybody, and welcome to Blue Jays Today, where we always have something to say about the Toronto Blue Jays. I'm your host, Nicholas Blaylog. And I'm your host, Adam Peddle. And today, guys, we've got five Toronto Blue Jays that could be traded this offseason. It's going to be one hell of an offseason for the Toronto Blue Jays, and they might get some value to help them in 2025 with some guys on their current roster if they can go send them off via trade. There's a couple big names on this list, Nick, and we're going to explain our reasoning. And you guys feel free in the comments to let us know your reasoning behind what guys you think should be traded. Before we get into it, guys, though, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to Blue Jays today. All right, let's start off with the first one, Nick, and it's a big one here. It is Mr. Bo Bichette. Well, no surprise here with Bo Bichette, right? This has been speculated upon all season long. As we know, Bo Bichette, season from hell, right? The numbers have looked terrible, and uh, I mean, there is now a question about what type of production you can expect from Bo Bichette in 2025. We're of the opinion that he will be better. I think it's honestly hard right. for him to be worse uh, considering how <laughs> things went this year. And the hope is that if you were to trade him, other teams, other GMs would also be of that same mindset that he is going to get back to his 2023 and 2022 and, well, basically any other year other than this one for 2025. Mm -hmm. Bichette and the potential for a trade for me has all got to do with the team relationship, you know, and it's all got to do with uh, how you can mend those fences or build those bridges back up from where it was. I know that he's come out and he said recently that he does want to be here long term and everything like that. How much of that is media speak? How much of that is true? These are the internal mm -hmm. conversations that we're not privy to, but I think that this one for me all comes down to the relationship with him and the management. Yeah, and for me it also comes down to the money because a lot of money talks. If he does bounce back and we're all expecting him to do that, then he might start commanding what we thought he was worth before this 2024 season. You know, over $100 million, $150 million. You know, it's, it might be a lot of money for a very young and have a big proven track record, Bo Bichette, mm -hmm. entering free agency in 2025. However, on the other side of things, we've got Vladimir Guerrero Jr., who I think we all would much rather throw way more money on because of the proven track record and how much he wants to play for the Toronto Blue Jays for the rest of his career. So for me, signing both those guys in the same offseason, that is pretty expensive. And we've never seen a Toronto Blue Jay offseason like it before. So I don't know how realistic it is to keep both of them around. So if you're not planning on keeping Bo Bichette around and the relationship isn't looking good, then maybe you do get an offer out there that says, hey, okay, well, I'm okay with accepting this offer for Bo Bichette, even though his value is a little low, because I don't feel comfortable walking into 2025 and kind of wasting away his value there go cash in on that value now well i'll be completely honest guys i've actually i'm kind of completely out on the idea that we are going to extend them you know I, I really think that you know i to throw a number on it maybe 90 95 percent of the time next year is the last year of boba shed and then he will be on to other and you know different things with another organization so i think for me if you're the blue jays you need to ask yourself is that one year of boba shed more valuable to you than mm -hmm. whatever it is that you might be receiving in a trade could you get a prospect that could be with this team for <laughs> years to come could you get somebody that you could use in the bullpen right now That's you know true. would that provide more value these are the questions that they are going to need to answer but i can promise you everybody that the boba shed trade conversations they will be heavy they will be they will be heating up as the offseason goes on. Absolutely, because, I mean, hey, if you do trade away Bo Bichette, the one good thing I guess you could say right now is the Blue Jays have a lot of options in that infield to go and replace Bo Bichette if you do decide to trade him this offseason, which actually leads us to our next guy. And it's a few guys, actually. We're mm. kind of looping them, grouping them all into one because we can't really pick one. But it's trading away one of the Blue Jays' prospects this offseason. I just made a video talking about this where I think, you know, we have so many options in that infield even in the outfield too and, and you know we got a lot of guys this trade deadline mm -hmm. there's not a lot of playing time to go around on this blue jays roster especially if you want to go add some big bats this free agency so why not send a couple away for maybe some bullpen help which feels like the most likely area that the blue jays are going to get so you know i'm talking about the will wagner's the Yonatan Classes. Hell, I could even see a reality where an Addison Barger set, sent off if the return is right. One of those guys may not be around on the Blue Jays in 2025. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree with you because you do look at that that infield, right? And you have Guerrero, whether it be at first or third, I yeah. mean, he will be locking up a spot. I think at this point it's safe to say that, again, assuming they don't trade him away or anything ridiculous, Spencer Horwitz 
also going to be locking up yep. a spot most of the time in there. And then if Bo Bichette is going to be back with this team next season, then that's another everyday player. So right. you're looking at uh, effectively just one available spot in there that we're not <laughs> really sure about, and that is then up for grabs between the Ernie Clement, maybe a David Schneider, who knows, uh, you know, an Addison Barger, a Will Wagner, and a Relvis Martinez. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, fuck, the list goes on and on and on and on, right? So mm -hmm. I do think that that you know they have a lot of depth there, which is a good thing. But when you look at the other areas of need on this ball club, the bullpen is screaming for help right now. Taking an Addison Barger and then moving that asset over into somebody that you know could help this bullpen out for not only next year, mm -hmm. but maybe a couple more years after that, might be the move. And you know what? It wouldn't be the first time the Blue Jays have done something like this. They've done it with Rowdy Telez. You know, right. when we needed bullpen help, we actually got Mr. Uh, Mr. Trevor Richards. And I believe we got Powder France that deal. I saw that on Twitter. I actually totally forgot about that. And then you saw a Jordan Groshans. Remember him? He went over yeah. to Miami for uh, Anthony Bass and Zach Pop. Granted, both of them aren't really working out. But still, you need to go make that, uh, that trade and that move sooner rather than later because 2025 is almost almost here <laughs> yeah 100 percent. and and to that or i guess in the same vein the third toronto blue jay that we will kind of single out here as, as being potentially traded away this offseason would be an ernie clement and it's for a lot of the same reasons that we just listed off for one of these top prospects i think the thinking there is uh, I mean, instead of giving away, you know, the the super youth and mm -hmm. you know, like our, you know, an Addison Barger, number six or number five guy in our system. Well, let's give away an Ernie Clement because he proved that he is very capable at the MLB level this year. There was thoughts prior to this season starting that like he might just get outright cut, right. and I am very happy that they did not do that because he has proven that he does have some value at this level for the Toronto Blue Jays. You have to ask yourself. What does the future look like with him? Do we mm -hmm. want him to be one of the guys for the next few years, kind of, you know, locking down and, I guess for lack of a better term, clogging up a spot for <laughs> one of those young uh, young prospects? Or alternatively, do we want to make the space so that or Elvis Martinez and, you know, whomever else can go and get their playing time, right? So I think that this would just be doing the similar thing that we just talked right. about, but kind of on the flip side of the coin, trading away an already MLB player for a bullpen piece. Yeah, and don't get me wrong, guys. I really have enjoyed my time with Ernie Clement this season. Even last year, I really liked him up with the Blue Jays. And, it, you know, if it had to be a choice where, okay, I, we're going to trade him off and we're going to get a, a decent bullpen guy or maybe an okay middle reliever back, I might have to do it because, I mean, you, you could be like, oh, well, Ernie Clement doesn't have to start for you every day, maybe get on the bench. Well, again, like the points we're making, you still got Will Wagner and David Schneider and Norvis Martinez. Those guys can go play on the bench, and they're going to be a little a little bit cheaper, a little tiny bit cheaper than a, uh, Ernie Clement, even though they're basically getting paid the same amount of money. But you look at the youth, you look at the age, and you look at also the year that he had. This is his by far other than 2023 limited playing time. 29 games. So. Yeah, 29 games. This is best season ever, right? So, like, how many of these best seasons ever are we going to get? I don't know. I kind of like, I, I kind of am leaning towards going with the youth just because it makes sense to do a little bit of a restart. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I could really see them going either way. I know that this organization loves Ernie Clement. And again, like, this is no knock to him at all. I'd no. be very happy to see him with this team moving forward. I think that as a utility player, He's really solid. I think that he has been thrust into a starting role this year, which probably isn't where we want to see him <laughs> moving forward. But, like, you cannot argue with the defense from Ernie Clement. So, as a utility guy, if they do hold on to him, would still be happy with that, but could potentially be a trade piece somewhere mm -hmm. else. Mm -hmm. Now, let's look at a different area, I guess, if you will, right? We've been talking about some of these younger, cheaper options to go out and get the bullpen pieces. Uh, but the Toronto Blue Jays, they're spending a decent chunk of money on some old and aging veterans right now, specifically George Springer. And George Springer, two more years left on his deal right now. It is a significant chunk of money, folks. Yeah. You're looking at just under $25 million a year for George Springer, 24.16 million dollars a year for Springer. And we're talking about a guy who effectively has the exact same slash line, if not worse, <laughs> than an Ernie Clement. Actually worse. Worse. Worse, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, yep. it's not good, everybody. It <laughs> really isn't. And I mean, if you're watching this video, then you already know that this is a, a big underperformance from what we expected from George Springer. We knew that eventually there was going to be the decline. I think that a lot of us were just hoping that it was going to happen a little bit later and that 
the years that he wasn't declining, we would have seen more of, and we would have seen him healthier. So this one mm -hmm. for me, I could see them going in this direction just as a salary dump. The biggest hurdle, the biggest obstacle is going to be who's willing to take on that contract. Yeah, that's the thing. A, a, a trade with George Springer is going to involve the Blue Jays eating a ton of money of that contract. Let's say you just round it out to a nice sweet number. You got $50 million left for George Springer to pay. You're going to have to pay 40 to $45 million of that. It I would be. highly imagine. I'm not a finance major or anything like that or have experience in that area, but I can imagine in order to save... Uh, in order to dump them, it'd be that much money. But that, that also begs the question, is it even worth eating 40 to $45 million of George Springer when you take a look at this Blue Jays outfield? It's actually looking a lot thinner than we expected. Obviously, Dalton Barjo's the lead dog in there. He might be coming into the year injured, but should be okay. Mm. But other than him, you have George Springer, and then in your left field, you've got a mix of Joey Loperfito that hasn't been looking too good so far in the Blue Chase uniform. You got Jonathan Classe that maybe could be something there, but is he ready for major league level? Um, that's something of an area that we don't have a lot of guys to just go get playing time. So w why would we dump him if it means, you know, we're still eating a lot of money and we still need guys to play anyways for the Blue Jays? Maybe we just keep him for his presence, for the fans that like him. Etc. Well, I mean, it, again, like, yes, I hear you. However, it's not our money. And when you're talking about, <laughs> like, saving $10 million, like, I know in the uh -huh. grand scheme of things, it's like, oh, like, $10 million, what is that? It's $10 right. million. Like, it right, could, right. again, it like, could maybe, buy you another that's player. the thing, it could yeah. get you another player, or alternatively, like, maybe just Edward Rogers thinking to himself, damn, I could, I could hold on to $10 million. <laughs> oh, vacation. Exactly, right? <laughs> right like, right. you know, again, like, that is still a significant chunk of money, so I hear where you're coming from there, that, mm. yeah, it's, it's not, like, a perfect situation at all right now, but if you can, like, shave off a decent amount of that money and then, I don't know, reinvest that. You know, I, I look over mm -hmm. at some of the other free agents. I don't want to go too deep into this right now, but, like, oh, okay, this is a great one. Uh, let's say a Danny Jansen. Like, would you right. rather, you know, right. you could take that $10 million and pay Danny Jansen, and now your catching situation is effectively right. back to where it was at the course. beginning of this year, right? And, and then, yes, you don't have George Springer, but that's something that you're going to need to address with the youth and then also probably through free agency as well. Of course. I hope that this whole experience has, I've been, I guess, been kind of a lesson learning for the Toronto Blue Jays in the sense that, yeah, paying like uh, injury riddled, uh, aging uh, center fielders might not always be the best motive. However, hindsight is 2020, yeah. and this is where we're at right now. Because that's the, I agree with you uh, that we could reinvest that money. First, got to get someone to take that contract and take mm -hmm. him on the team. But, yeah, I think signing George Springer, looking back at when we first did it, was I think is still the correct move. You're hoping that he would lead your ball club into the postseason, have that MVP, you know, World Series MVP moment like he had in 2020, uh, 2017, excuse me. But we never really got there. We never even won a single ball game for, I think, a lot more issues than just George Springer. Yeah. So it is what it is. It didn't work out. And now we're stuck with the reality that I don't think he's ever going to bounce back because now it's two years in a row of pure decline. So we got to find another solution. But if not, it is what it is. And we got to keep him on this team for some playing time. Take this with a grain of salt, everybody. But uh, just to put this in perspective, I'm on spot rack right here. Uh, Jesse Winker of the New York Mets, age 31. He apparently has a market value of $2.4 million that's right so now. Low. That's extremely um, low. He's got an OPS of 773, a batting average of 257. he He's been solid the whole year long. Uh, I mean, like, you're telling me that we shave off $10 million and buy, and Jesse, buy Winker. Jesse Winker and then also hey. buy Danny Jansen. Hey. I don't we, know. <laughs> if we did, I mean, look, at the end of the day, someone's, I'm not, like, saying, like, we should or shouldn't do it. Yeah. But, like, I'm, if we can get someone to get that deal done with, then yes, absolutely. Then, absolutely. 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 I will also admit, I think that they're, they're this is way thoroughly undervaluing, undervaluing yeah. Jesse Winker. I would be shocked if he only goes for $2.5 million. Yeah. That would be just a steal and a half. I However, point being that, you know, you could obviously take that money and do something else with it. And similarly, the same argument can be said for the last player on this list. Whoa, time for your daily Betway breather. A quick reminder that the best place to bet is on Betway. Must be 19 years of age or older to play in collaboration with iGaming Ontario. Please bet responsibly. Now, back to the content. Chris Bassett. Now, Chris Bassett, I was screaming at the top of my lungs to trade this guy away yeah. at the trade deadline. I mean, I think that that was a big miss because ever since the trade deadline, it's not been so great for Chris mm -hmm. Bassett and the value has kind of been 
declining. Uh, he's negative gonna have war, bro. Negative, negative war. Negative war on the year. On the year. That's shocking to me. I, yeah. I wasn't even I, aware of that. I guess he's committed some errors. So I was not yeah. even aware of that. But yeah, I mean, this obviously isn't the greatest year from Chris Bassett. Now, if they held on to him, I don't think it's the worst thing in the world. You're going to have him for one more year. It's $20, 22 mm. million dollars, something like that. Um, you know, and, and I do think that Chris Bassett is still serviceable in that rotation. And again, worst year of his career. You got to hope that he bounces back. On the flip side, though, mm. he is 34, 35 years old 30, right now. He will be turning 36 next year. My mistake. 36 years old for next year. So the argument of age and declining and regression and all that stuff, that is a serious argument right now. And I think that if you are looking to shave some money and maybe you are looking to reinvest in some other players, then if anybody's willing to take on Chris Bassett, that could also be a move. Yeah, like, again, he's getting paid $22 million for next year. Well, why don't you try and dump that money? I think, I think a team would actually gladly take on, if not all, of Chris Bassett's contract because it's one of those things where it's only been one year and the ERA doesn't look that bad. No, it doesn't. So, so it's one of those things where the Blue Jays, if they tried to big bring it, getting ahead of the eventual downslide of Chris Bassett. So for me, yeah, you take that $22 million that you shave off and then go put it into like a Jack Flaherty or anybody else oh, or, or a Sean Manaya or a bullpen, right? Like go, because you will, if you trade off Chris Bassett, you are going to have to address that starting rotation because that yes. depth is getting a lot thinner. We don't have too much depth anyway. So you're going to, especially especially with how many injuries that just happened in our minor league system, a lot of guys going for Tommy John. So if you reinvest that into a starting pitcher or a bullpen piece, that would probably be money well spent. Yeah, I do look at, uh, I mean, some of the underlying numbers, especially the whip is concerning mm -hmm. for me, uh, you know, last year. And you can look at effectively from 2018 all the way to 2023. So a, a six year sample size right there of Chris Bassett, like the whip was pretty much the same the entire right. time. And we are seeing a dramatic increase there from yeah. last year and, and previous years to this year. So. That's obviously very concerning, yeah. especially because Chris Bassett, he is not a, a power guy. So if he's letting people on for free type thing, mm -hmm. uh, that's a big problem. You've got to be painting the edges. I do think that the writing is kind of on it's the wall. It's kind of there. And it's I wouldn't be shocked at all that if he came out next year and, you know, just didn't look great. So again... If you can get rid of him, if you can find anybody that is willing to give you something and take on that money, I think yeah. it, could, it could be it could be a vibe. It could be. It might be one of those things where you go and you get kind of that like backup starting pitcher first and then trade Chris Bassett because yeah. you want to make sure if you're trading him, you still got somebody to pitch in that rotation. I agree. Uh, it's the thing, right? You got to, again, and all of these things, I think it, mm. it goes back to, yeah, having that backup plan, right? Mm -hmm. You know, we cannot trade all of these guys because, I mean, fuck, we're not even going to have a baseball team, right? <laughs> but, you know, especially with a Chris Bassett and also with the George Springer too, mm -hmm. well, if you're going to trade away George Springer, who's going to play outfield? That's we right. have to have our eye already. At least we got to be in the finals, you know, discussions right here. It's almost pen to paper with some other outfielder, mm -hmm. Tyler O'Neill, for instance. It's like we're right. we're right, we're close to getting it done, and then it's like okay, well now we can dump this money and get this guy, and you know, it, so there's a lot of moving parts here. Obviously, it's not just a simple one for one, and then that's it, whatever. Mm -hmm. But again, a Chris Bassett, I could see value there if someone else is interested. Absolutely, guys, let us know your thoughts on this list. We got five players right here. Is anyone on this list that you disagree that would no way, no way are these guys getting traded? And is there somebody that we miss that isn't on this list? You guys, let us know in the comments down below. Yeah, thank you. So much for watching everybody shout out to our patreon members and our youtube members for being incredible incredible supporters of this channel only three dollars a month become a patron or youtube member we appreciate all of you thank you so much for watching and as always go, go james, james go, go.